still is so awe-inspiring when you see how the Holy Spirit can work in us. And when you see them growing, it makes you draw closer together. The trust that we have, with, I don't know how to explain that. It's mm. just, we know that God's with us and we know that mm. He has brought us together. And as we're growing, we encourage each other constantly. No question is dumb. We always go to scripture. It's well worth doing this for that reason. Welcome, everyone, to Renew Your Mind podcast. With us today, we have Senior Pastor Paul Gruenberg. We have Associate Pastor Jeremy Teru, And we have very special guest. It's Michelle. Help me pronounce Janino. your last name. Janino. Janino. I will probably say it wrong every single time. But um, most everybody knows Michelle. And she works. Uh, she's our admin person in the office, so a lot of you know her. But I will let Michelle introduce herself, and then um, we are on a series about small groups, and uh, we're going to ask Michelle some questions about her small group that she's in. So take it away. <laughs> okay, I am Michelle Janino, and yes, I work in the office. I play in the nine o'clock service, but I also lead a small group called Sunshine Girls, mm -hmm. and. Um, and it meets Wednesday mornings. Meets Wednesday mornings at nine o'clock. And we will go through the summer and take August off. We are getting ready to study um, the book called I Am. And mm. it's um, Discovering Jesus Christ. Nice. That sounds cool. cool. Really good. I know. <laughs> the guy. <laughs> the guy. Um, so how many people in your small crew? Um, we have eight pretty consistently. Okay. There's 10 that come and go. Okay. Mm. And are you the lead person? I'm the facilitator, yes. Okay. <laughs> facilitator. Oh, I used <laughs> I the wrong word. <laughs> and, well, you know, actually that's important to get it out is. there because sometimes people will not lead a small group because they think they have to be an expert before they uh, will take on that kind of role. And, and facilitator is actually what a good small group leader does because you're yeah. facilitating discussion as opposed to, um, you know, preaching or teaching exactly. for 30 or 40 minutes and feeling like every, every week you meet, you have to have all of this stuff in your mind before you feel qualified enough. And that's just not the truth. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. I do not lead the group. We all... Mm -hmm make sure that we're getting everything that we need. Um, I don't just pick the studies by myself. I might suggest some things, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but um, we pray for each other. Um, even through text messages throughout the week, when something comes up, we have become a really good, we've learned to pray out loud for one another, which is a huge thing for myself, even mm -hmm. because it's scary to do that. And what? so it's helping us. Oh, I, know, wow. I, I know you find that hard to believe, but... <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's good for us to grow that way mm -hmm. and to be connected to one another in Christ. And we're, go we're just growing in leaps and bounds. It's really very exciting. So, so what facilitated, I mean, obviously the small group's been going on for a number of years. Yes. So was there a time when you didn't pray for one another that the study just ended and somebody would uh, pray no. you out as opposed to, what you're talking about is interceding for one another. We've always asked for prayer requests, but I think we're becoming much more comfortable and active. Myself, personally, sending a prayer out to our group when we know that somebody is hurting or mm -hmm. has a need. Right then and there, I pray for them instead of saying, I will pray for you. Um, and for me, that's growing. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. before we like, oh, I'll pray, that's cowardly <laughs> to not be able to say out loud. Um, so we is, always prayed at the beginning and the end of our class, but this is much more intentional, I think. Right. This is not the, <clears throat> let's ask the Holy Spirit to come and lead and guide us. And thank you, Lord, at the end for being with us type stuff. This is praying for one another, yes, intentional prayer. We do that too. We always ask. But. So what precipitated that? What precipitated the movement from just an opening and closing prayer to now um, intentionally having a time of prayer? Growing and just working in the church and learning from you really to um, do that. It's true. But I you mean, studied books on prayer. You didn't 
Oh yeah, we have done books on prayer. Yeah, is it is it um, is it this? Because I, I think I might have experienced it um, when I was a part of your group for a short period of time. But is it because you've seen some answered prayers? Yeah, I'm not saying that's the only reason, but um, I'm sure you've seen some very powerful answers. Yes, and mm-hmm. we have some strong prayer warriors in there that just naturally do that. Mm-hmm. And we trust one another. I think that has a lot to do with it, that we've grown together and we trust one another and we know it's we're safe. It's okay to mm-hmm. not always have the right words or know exactly what to say, but we know how God works in our lives. And so it's really important that we... Mm-hmm go to him and to go to him first that's hard to we tend to want to do it by ourselves and just knowing how god yeah mm-hmm. can do those we know that he can heal us and we trust him with everything that we have so mm-hmm. um is there one really well i have two questions how long has your group been together and i'll ask my second one is there one really special thing that your group does that you would like to share with our listeners? Sure. Um, I started facilitating a small group when Pastor Dan was here. He asked me to lead a group. Mm -hmm. And it was co-ed at first. And then it became just a group of women started to meet. And we were hungry to study more and more. We just kept wanting to go. And then COVID hit and we started meeting. Just there was a core group of us that needed to be together. Excuse me. And... um, so we met at somebody's house. Hmm. And then as our group started to grow, we needed to move ourselves back to the church. Um, and so I'd say that we've been together, the core of us have been together probably seven years, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. six or seven years. That's great. Okay. <clears throat> so Michelle, what is it like for you as the facilitator, but also you know, one of the participants in the group you're getting spiritual growth out of this and mm. your walk with Christ is is uh, closer because of this group. What is it like for you to see your group members growing spiritually and to observe mm. their growth and those moments where the light bulb kind of goes on for them and you see new things happening in their life? It's, uh, I can't even describe it. It's so exciting. It's It's more than just exciting though. It's really... It still is so awe-inspiring when you see how the Holy Spirit can work in us. And when you see them growing, it makes you draw closer together. And um, the trust that we have, with I don't know how to explain that. It's mm-hmm. just we know that God's with us, and we know that mm-hmm. He has brought us together. And as we're growing, we encourage each other constantly to um, no question is dumb. Mm-hmm. If I don't know the answer, I will find somebody that does know the answer. We always go to scripture, but it's just, it's well worth doing this for that reason. Because yeah. I know I'm bringing them closer to Christ. Yes. When yeah. people tell me that you make it look so natural when you talk about God like that, I just like Jesus is my best friend and I always go and talk mm-hmm. to him. You make that look natural. I want you to feel that way too. It mm-hmm. is natural. It should be. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's, it seems a part of it is is that vulnerability, the transparency. I mean, it didn't start right at the beginning, no. but it builds over time. Yeah. Yeah. More like a band. You know, we've, we know that we can be, to, it's like we're this little family all by ourselves. Yeah. And we, um, you could text each other in the middle of the night yep. and immediately one of us is going to reach out to the, all, the whole group together. We pray together. Um, but I think it's the studies that we're doing and praying for each, it's the whole thing, the whole package together. Yeah. So what would be uh, a couple of studies that you really enjoyed or your group together really enjoyed that was either beneficial or spurred you on? Um, we did a book called the gospel of ease because a lot of us are not comfortable <clears throat> Excuse me. Of going well, I'm out. Sorry, what was it again? The Gospel of Ease. And it's okay. by mm. Tom Rainier. Is that correct? Um, because when you say evangelism, a lot of us are like, oh, I cannot do that. But 
when you read that book, it makes it so we can all do that. And if you have the light of Christ, people are going to approach you, quite honestly, and start mm -hmm. talking to you. So that makes it a little easier. And our whole group benefited from that. We really grew from that book. Um, and what is that book? To, I mean, just... It's about evangelizing. It's about sharing the gospel with others mm -hmm. out in your community mm -hmm. and um, even within your church. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's hard to do. And so we really... It was an uncomfortable subject, and it really helped us grow to be excited to talk about Christ and not be nervous about it. And I'm trying to think of some other ones that we've, we did one about resting, knowing that we can, to restore and rest us. Mm -hmm. um, it's okay to give ourselves permission. Jesus rested also. And then we need to do that, taking time to be quiet. And we did one on the Holy Spirit about learning to be quiet and listening and not always talking. And that's important. I think mm -hmm. for all of us to shut our minds off. And um, we did one on angels. There were a couple of us that were really <laughs> curious about angels. And so mm -hmm. we did a study on who are the angels and what mm -hmm. did they do? <laughs> it's yeah. very, very interesting. Yeah. So, Michelle, you mentioned the trust <laughs> aspect of your group, mm -hmm. which I think is so special and important for this type of group to have kind of that intimate relationship where you trust each other. You can share things and be transparent. Um, could you comment a little bit on the importance of the members being committed to the group in order for that trust to build. I mean, co consistent attendance and participate and um, have your heart ready to be there and those kind of things versus, you know, maybe people are kind of in and out and you don't ever know if they're going to be there type thing. Mm -hmm. How does yes. that affect trust? Well, it makes us we're like a family unit. And when mm -hmm. one of us isn't there, mm -hmm. we're really missing that person and they're missing us. We keep an eye on one another for that same yes. kind of aspect. We are a family That's unit. Great. And yeah. um, they want to be there. They're so, because they trust us and they miss us and right. love us. Mm -hmm. And at first they would, somebody in the group would say, what is said here stays here. We don't need to say that. Right. We know that. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, we love each other yeah. and we know that. Yeah. We right. share that often, how much we love and care for one another. Sure. And mm -hmm. so that just, I think as we've grown together, we have people, I, well, I'm not a closed group because if we're doing something that might interest somebody, we want them to be able to come mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. study alongside of us. And we, I, I know Dana joined us for a short period of time. She could probably tell you from that aspect of it, you know, like, did we welcome? I think we're welcoming. We just oh, yeah. bring people in. and um, Yes. Yeah, what I liked is um, the group was welcoming, mm -hmm. and it was also um, an hour, and they let me um, call in. Yeah, we now, do that. Now, it's, you know, always best to be in person, but I just couldn't be there, and that was huge. Mm -hmm. And I could stay committed yeah. to that group. So That's that great. helped me a lot. Yeah. yeah. We do do mm -hmm. yeah, we do that a lot actually. It's mm -hmm. really important. I mean, we're not on Zoom, we could be. But sometimes people are traveling and yeah. are in their car talking to us. Um That's great. Sometimes mm -hmm. they're just listening mm -hmm. in while they're moving mm -hmm. around and stuff like mm -hmm. that. You've done that a few times. Mm -hmm. Um they just want they need to be there. They yeah. miss it when yes. we're, we're not together. Yeah. And that's what we heard um yeah from Melanie's uh, small group that mm -hmm. they needed to be there. Yes. And when they weren't able to have a group, a meeting, like they missed a week, they couldn't, I don't want to say they couldn't get through their week, but it was they were a struggle. It. They were yeah. missing it. I they think that's a great way it. to say it. Yeah. 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 And I do think, because we meet on Wednesday, so it's a little bit of a, we're halfway through the week. And we got together yeah. and nice encourages boost. us and it gives us support and strength yeah. to mm -hmm. um, remind us we're carrying on with God's guidance and um, his love, mm -hmm. you know, and letting them know I'm the youngest one in my group. Most <laughs> of them are my mother's age. And <clears throat> just learning to talk about God like that instead of it being so formal. It doesn't need to be formal. Mm -hmm. We should be very comfortable about coming to him in any condition we're in mm -hmm. and to learn that, to be vulnerable mm -hmm. with him. That's has big, been pretty awesome. Yeah. And we do have a mission. I know that was the other part of your, We do um, 
little gift sunshine baskets for our women. Oh, okay. And it doesn't have to mean that they're sick or anything like that. If somebody pops into our head and is on our mind, we're going to send them a little gift basket just of pick-me-up, encouraging flowers, something to brighten their day nice. and help let them know that they're loved. Mm-hmm. And what remind... Um, you have a goal for that too, don't you? Every woman in the church will get a basket before I die. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yes. I think that's awesome. And it, that I mean, not the dying part. Yeah. 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 That's a different podcast. People are coming and going all the time. So, um, and it's a good way for us to introduce ourselves to newer people in our congregation or mm-hmm. just letting them know that. We are a family unit. This whole church, we are a family. Mm -hmm. And we want the women to know that we care about you and we love you and we're praying for you. That's great. That's well Mm -hmm. said. Is there anything else that, like any experience um, that's just really special to you or somebody, one member of your group, like anything that comes to mind, anything else that comes to mind? And I'm not trying to put you on the spot. I just wondered if there was anything else you wanted to share? I think that the most special thing, and just recently um, seeing these people growing in, in Christ, just learning so much about him and being so excited about it. Mm-hmm. Um, I had one lady that just was really unsure and being super quiet, didn't say a whole lot. I don't press anybody to, mm-hmm. I don't want to make them uncomfortable. But she has grown so much that she actually cuts people off now to say what she wants to say. <laughs> That's great. And she's shy. She's really shy. <laughs> and so it just makes me, makes my light shine a little bit brighter, actually. It just makes me so happy to see her trust coming us. Coming out of like, her shell. Yeah, coming mm-hmm. out of her shell. Yeah. All I think all of us are, I'm, I'm not the leader. Learning. Like I said, I'm the facilitator. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It seems like there's so much pressure on you when you say that. I don't know everything. I'm not super scholarly or anything <laughs> like that. But I'm hungry for the word of God too. So when something, I saw a study that really interested in me and I started asking a couple of people. That's the other thing. If you ask people personally to join you, quite often they will. They're looking. Mm-hmm. And... So I was hungry for it, and they were like, this looks good, and they wanted to study it with me, and that's kind of how I started. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's really, so yeah, that's really a great point. You know, you don't have to be a teacher. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So one of the interesting things about it in what you've been talking about in terms of one, learning, but two, growing in your relationship with God, they're so hand in hand. Yeah. Um, And then... Three, you're doing it within a small community, very Westland. Uh, the idea of one person leading others is uh, a model. Well, Jesus modeled that. But the reality is, is that we grow in community together. And so what one person knows, another person might need to know. Another person is, you know, everyone's growing and you spur one another on. I just think if you're not in a small group, you're losing out. Well, and I think that the more that you study God's word, for myself, when I was in my 20s, um, my mom started doing Bible studies with me. And the more I learned, the more I wanted to read. I was so hungry for it. And I think today even, it's like, okay, we don't want to stop. Mm-hmm. I need yeah. to take August off simply just to yeah. rest. Yeah. <laughs> but we don't want to stop studying. Right. And when you talked about your studies, you talked about um, topical studies like evangelism, prayer. Uh, do you do book studies? Mostly book studies. We're doing, we're just finishing up the book of Galatians by scripture. Uh, we're reading scripture. Um, because I really wanted to learn how <laughs> to use a coordinate and. Am I saying that? Concordance. Um, And different translations of the Bible and to see, you know, what does your Bible say? And it Mm -hmm. gave us great discussion. We didn't go flying through it. We took our time to make sure that we were really understanding what we were reading and 
internalizing it mm-hmm. yeah. to help us grow more in scripture. I I worry about doing scripture lessons like that because I'm not a minister. <laughs> you don't have to be. And one of the things is you're in the word of God. Mm-hmm. And within the community, that helps to keep you on a, a more straight and narrow path so that one person's idea, if it's over here and another person over here, then that allows for communication and then someone uh, finds a, con- um, not a concordance. Commentary. Commentary mm. or uh, talks with some people who are further down the road and helps to bring clarification. I mean, I do that in my studies too, you know, if I don't know, hey, I'm gonna have to get back with you. Mm-hmm. So there's never the perfect teacher. Mm. Right. I don't wanna lead anybody astray. So I right. def- if I don't know, I'm not going to make up the answer mm. and there are people who do i know and that's why it, that made, that's why it made me nervous because i was like oh, I, I i would feel awful if i told somebody the wrong thing isn't that the truth we don't even think about that but we typically do book studies mm-hmm. it's just because and i say topics and stuff like that but um i always ask you know what are you guys wanting to study what are you looking for Sometimes if we notice somebody maybe needs basic foundation or, you know, you kind of just listen to one another and we pray about it. Um, Like the book that we're going to do this, I Am, we needed to go back to some basic foundations and make sure that we're really good and strong before we go into something a little more in-depth that somebody else had suggested. And I Am sounds like it's going to, this is who Jesus is. Yes. Yeah, yes. That's, a, that's a very smart process. I'm so yeah. excited about it. I can't wait. Oh, yeah. I was super excited. <laughs> and you're going to start that pretty soon? Is that yes. true? Uh, okay. This Wednesday will be our last Galatians study. Okay. So the next Wednesday will be the first study. Of, okay. And, it, and we're open. So okay. if anybody's interested, <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Let well, us know. I think on that note, we'll wrap it up. Unless there's anything else anybody has to comment on? Thank you, Michelle. Yes, yes thank, thank you. you. Yeah, yes. thank you so much for joining us. It, thank you. It really helps to hear your different perspectives of, you know, these specific small groups. So we really mm-hmm. appreciate it. Um, we come to you from the Gaylord Methodist Church. And um, every Sunday we have a traditional 9 a.m. service. And we also have a contemporary 1045 a.m. service. And we'd, oh, we also have every second and fourth Wednesday an Encountering God service. And we'd love to have you come in person. Um, if you can't, though, you can view us on Facebook or YouTube. Um, if you have any questions, Michelle will be answering the phone at 989-732-5380. And um, yeah, we just are really glad you joined us today. Thanks, everybody.